Hello everyone, I'm Freaky and welcome to the video. Today I'm going to be reacting to FCC's Hook vs. Bubba Fett. So if you guys haven't seen this video, please go and watch that video first. As soon as you watch that, come back once you watch this. So, so that's it, let's continue. Uh, okay, I know, who, I know who Bubba Fett is, and but I don't know who uh, Hook is. Um, the thing is, I did play a little bit of the um, Resident Evil game, you know, like the first one, but I only got halfway through it, but I... Uh, um, I don't. I don't know who. I don't know who. who Hook is. Um, it's been. It's been a long time since. I've, since I've, I've. I've played Resident Evil. So yeah, I do apologize to all the Resident Evil fans out there. So. Uh, now, when it comes to Bubba Fett, I know a little bit. I know a little bit more about him than I do. do um, uh, Hook. You know, he's like one of the most um iconic uh, um Star Wars um characters. You know, all, all the all the geeks love him. So who do I think is gonna win this? Um, I'm gonna say. Bubba Fett, simply because I know a little bit more. So without further ado, let's get to watching. So this is Hook versus uh, Bubba Fett, uh, and three, two, one, and go. <laughs> Killing, the art of ending someone's life. To many, it's taboo, but for some, it's nothing but orders. And to those very few, they do it in the most badass way possible without needing to say much. <laughs> it's good to hear these guys talk in. Like Hunk, Resident Evil's Grim Reaper, and the fourth survivor of Raccoon City. And Boba Fett, Star Wars greatest bounty hunter among the well, stars. He's demon and I'm Archer. And it's our job to analyze these characters to their fullest, going through their feats and faults to see what happens when these two fictional characters collide. <laughs> I love these the guys, they're funny. The of Resident Evil, no Boba is as iconic as the Knight of Raccoon City. That night, the undead risen and infected the living. And if only a few chosen lucky souls made it out to see the light. You might actually know some of them. Leon, Claire, and Sherry Birkin, the original three survivors of that fateful night. But what if we told you of another tale that night? A tale of a fourth survivor deep in the sewers of Raccoon City. Leader of the Alpha Team that was sent to prevent and acquire the virus that originally caused this outbreak. Well, let us tell you the story of this soldier of Umbrella, the Grim Reaper known as Hunk. Nighthawk. This is Hunk Man, he is such a hunk. Team. Get hunk. <laughs> yeah, so funny story about Hunk and why he ended up here at Zombie Ground Zero. See, he was the leader of Alpha Team, a group of elite soldiers ran by their company known as Umbrella. They were sent to acquire the original virus and the creator of it, William Birkin, alive. Take a note on that. Once he and his men found Birkin, he was less than willing to go with them. Since one of Hunk's allies was trigger happy, and then started the downward spiral of terrible things to happen in Resident Evil. Which then caused Birkin to infect himself with the virus, lose cycle, and kill most of Alpha Team. Except for Hunk. You see, Hunk is known as the Grim Reaper because when he is sent on a mission, he is usually the only one to survive the situation. Mm. So the idea is that everyone else kind of dies so he could come back with the completed mission. That sounds like awful team morale when knowing he's on your team. But after the attack from Birkin, Hunk woke up in the sewers of Raccoon City in one mission to escape. And luckily, with the help of his massive arsenal and gear, he can do just that. He has pistols, magnums, SMGs, shotguns, assault rifles. Anything a military grade soldier would basically have on him. Alongside the usual guns, he has grenades and flashbangs, and if a zombie gets too close for him, he can shove one down their gullet and detonate it with a single shot. Or just stab one of them with the many knives he has on him. If he ever gets injured, he always seems to have many herbal remedies to first aid sprays to heal himself up and alongside the tactical SWAT outfit, which is made to take gunfire or zombie bites and somehow grenade explosions at such a close proximity. He also is a master of what seems to be his own form of close quarters combat, which seems to be taking advantage of enemies stumbling and being caught off guard and... Using that to snap necks. Like, a lot of necks. <laughs> okay, this guy clearly has addiction for snapping these necks. Someone what, 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 what is he? That's, um, that epi uh, SCP uh, peanut thing? Dogs, whatever those things in the sewers are, and even beings like the Tyrant, who can break through walls like paper, lift up destroyed helicopters with a single hand, and even taking an exploding armor cart to the face like nothing. 
and it's safe to say being one of the few that survived the effects of the virus, he's capable of scaling to everyone's favorite colorful cast of shell shock characters who just want to retire. Like Leon, who could throw a knife faster than the eye can track, or Jill Valentine, who in the original RE3 game was able to dodge Nemesis' own rocket launcher fire, even oh, already in the high hypersonic forms of speed. And he is mostly likely comparable to Chris Redfield, who punched this large boulder a good few feet away. Judging the size of the boulder and how far it was punched by Chris, we estimate this single punch was around 7 tons of TNT. Yeah, no wonder people who studied the man has said he lost all man, 100% soldier. Well, on the contrary to what they said, he, he is still human. A good fatal shot would do him in by stuff as simple as a tail man or a shot to the head. And also his duty to the mission is more above him than his own life. Like the event in the fourth survivor, when he told Nighthawk to leave because the higher up said so, and acted annoyed that he was still there to save him. Again, these two should totally settle down together. Total <laughs> romance. Yep, maybe there is a tiny bit of humanity left in this. But it's just f already! Maybe the original person known as Hunk is still deep in there. Just maybe. But Hunk would never let that one Nova man back out. This soldier went from the deepest parts of zombie hell on his own with very little. He's seen death of his comrades all the time and is branded as basically a man who would be the only one to survive. Hunk, no matter what, is not human anymore, but only a soldier. And I think he'd rather keep it that way in this brand new evil world. What about you, sir? I lost the safety. I'm going back for it. Somewhere off in the galaxy, far, far away, there was the legend of one great bounty hunter known as Django Fett. I mean, you gotta be a famous Jango killer Fett, if the dark Jango lord Fett. of the Sith's oh, entire convoluted plan to take over the galaxy is based on all your own genetics. Or <laughs> team ordered the creation of clones to serve under him with Django's genes as the main source. It was all going good until his interaction with Mace Windu. During the battle, I guess, he didn't get that heads up about how lightsabers work, but Django's <clears throat> legacy didn't end right there. See, Django had one request from the Sith Lord that one clone would be unaltered so that he can have as a son to raise, and that son just so happened to be as dangerous as his father, <clears throat> taking his helmet and mantle as the most dangerous bounty hunter in the galaxy. Boba Fett, at your service. Awesome. Boba Fett is a beast. You gotta be if you're cool enough to collect the lightsabers of all the Jedi you killed. And it's no shock you can. Him and his pops aren't normal everyday humans or aliens. They're Mandalorians, which is basically a race of beings trained to professionally fight, well, anyone. While we only know one canonical Mandalorian with people like Jango and Boba or Mandalorian by name, but you won't be blamed for thinking of them, especially with the Mandalorian armor he wears. Made out of special metals, it's highly durable, strong enough to bounce back stuff like lightsaber strikes. You know, the thing iconic for cutting through anything with little issues. And even has built-in wrist blades and wrist blasters. Oh, and alongside that, his helmet is one of the most useless things in his arsenal. Not only has infrared, but also has a 360 degree view. If, 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 if the armor has, like, you know, can, can stop, uh, manhole, like his trusty EE3 um, what's called, um, with him at all times. Uh, like that, he has a jetpack that, that, that launches small uh, anti-hovercraft rockets from his back. Has barbed wire rope to snag enemies, and then kneecap rockets. Okay, who is the deranged monster who decided to weaponize the knees? The most harmless of foes. <laughs> Alongside all that, he has flamethrowers, concussive smart rockets, and tactical thermal detonators, which at one point were strong enough to destroy this large bridge. Given the size of the bridge and the explosion, it would be around 11 tons. And if you need more proof, here's him surviving thermal detonator grenades point blank. Basically, all he did was piss him off a bit. Yeah, huh. that guy isn't the most physically powerful bounty hunter around, but he can take a hit with, the, with that armor. Heck, most of his gear is made for the idea of disorienting Jedi and foes with a hint of dirty fighting. It's kind of why he does need to rely on his gear to handle opponents for him. Even if sometimes his Jedi has a tendency to, well, break at the worst times. <clears throat> but even then, the guy has fought dozens of Jedi, stood against Vader in the original timeline, and more. The man is so hard to tag and catch, he has shown to be able to dodge Ray Blaster fire in multiple occasions, and can even be seen Oops. as a blur to the human eye. And while the guy has been bested before, I have usual issues with his jetpack malfunctioning out of his control. His greatest weakness is something you wouldn't expect. The Sarlacc Pit. Like, seriously, this guy has, like, some weird connection to this pit in the sand. Like, come on. He can't... This can't be a coincidence. But besides that, Boba Fett has made his name through the galaxy of the universe. When you know you are his target, don't start running. You're only prolonging your end. 
Dun 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 dun. Okay, the combatant first set. Let's settle this. Will the Green Reaper not survive this hunt, or will Boba Fett's title of okay, the Okay, come on, Boba Fett. Be taken? Time for these two fictional characters to collide. Oh. Holy crap, muskets. Amateurs. This is Hawk. I just arrived at the mission area. Ready to start the mission. Ouch. Not bad. This job's getting interesting. Go, Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Boba 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 Fett. Go, 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 Boba Fett. Oh yeah, so gotta come up for that. Come on. There he goes. Survive, he still can't match Boba Fett in any meaningful way. Just comparing both sets of armor, I don't think military grade armor is going to match the power of Mandalorian armor. Hunk could theoretically scale to Chris, who punched a seven ton boulder, but Boba's armor survived an 11 ton detonator close range, and all it did was piss him off. Hunk could scale to Jill, but Valentine's rocket launcher dodged him. But Boba has dodged laser fire, and that doesn't include the most impactful part of this fight, which is Boba Fett's arsenal. While Hunk's arsenal is oppressive for the world of Resident Evil, he doesn't have anything for anti-landcraft rockets, plasma shots, thermal detonators, and he has no way to survive against a lightsaber strike. Stuff that Boba Fett has on him at all times. Granted, Hunk does have physical superiority over Fett in hand-to-hand, -hand, and is a lot more skilled in combat. But granted, Fett is known for outsmarting and playing dirty on much more superior foes, so it's safe to say he can do the same to Hunk. Hunk was a stubborn soldier to the end, but thanks to Boba Fett's more superior durability, Armor, gear, trickier style of fighting, is the Grim Reaper met his match. 
I guess Hunk's chances of victory just blew up in his face. <laughs> the winner is Boba Fett. So now what? On fictional characters collide. Okay, we can... Iron Fist. I look forward to fighting a real warrior. Lucario. Hold the power of Aura. <laughs> that was good. <sighs> Can't be sweating there for a second there. <sighs> very good, very good. So, if there's anything else you want to react to, just leave in the comments below, and I will get that video as soon as I can. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. And please don't forget to check out my other social medias. Please go and check out my alternative video platforms, Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Twitch, and please come and hang out on my Discord server. We can play games, have a movie night or a series night, or you can watch me play a few games. And if you guys have any suggestions of any videos you want me to react to, or any video ideas in general, you can tell me on my Discord. I'm also on Twitter, Gab, Getter, and Paula. I'm on Locals, Tumblr, Minds. And if you guys want to support me, please go and check out my subscribe star. It's like Patreon, but better. All these things are in the description box below. So please go and check them out and subscribe to them. I'm Geek Freak. Peace out. Bye.